The law of England and Wales was never designed to prevent you from carrying around a tool in a public place. And that includes folding pocket knives. But there are one or two questions that pop up frequently, so I thought I would address those in this video. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm a barrister who helps you understand law. So please do hit that subscribe button, even if you watch my channel regularly, because about 60% of you don't subscribe. And I know you watch regularly because I look at my statistics. And just as a caveat to the rest of this video, I'm not recommending that you carry around a knife in public? Quite the opposite. I would recommend that you don't carry around a knife in public. Unless, of course, you have an absolutely good reason. Not only because it would be an offence to carry around a knife without a good reason, unless, of course, it's a folding pocket knife and comes within the exemption, which I'll explain in this video, but because fewer knives on the street, the better. Because they harm people. Or at least bad people that get hold of knives harm people. So with the caveat out of the way, let's dive into the questions. So the underlying law is in section 139 of the Criminal Justice Act 1988. Because it makes it an offence to have with you an article that has a blade or a point in a public place. Unless, as I say, it's a folding pocket knife. Subsections 2 and 3 make clear that if the blade does not exceed 3 inches then it is a folding pocket knife. As long as it is immediately foldable at all times, such as this one here. Now, this is a Spyderco knife. This is my example of a folding pocket knife because the blade does not exceed three inches. It is immediately foldable at all times without any kind of locking mechanism whatsoever. And there's no button or anything else that makes this thing open there is this thumb uh, catch here that allows me to open the knife. Somebody got crossed with me the last time I did that, saying that it was too easy to show how a knife is open, but that's what it's for. I didn't design it, that's just what it's there for. But just to be clear, if it had any kind of um, button or any other kind of mechanism that made it open automatically, that would make it illegal. The important question here that I get quite frequently is about the length of the blade. Now, the legislation refers to three inches, so the blade must not exceed three inches. But when we look at the blade itself, you can see here that the majority of this blade is sharp, but this very first portion here is not. Now, on many blades like this, there might be a portion at the very start here uh, that is not sharp. Now, the question that comes about is, is it the sharp bit or is it the full length of the blade that counts? The simple answer is, it's the full length of the blade that counts, not the handle. So you discount the handle, but any portion of the blade, regardless of whether it is sharp or not. This came about in case law, because in Charles Brooker and DPP of 2005, there was a lengthy discussion about blades and whether or not the blade was sharp. Now, without going into every aspect of that judgment, the judge concluded, I quote, In my judgment, we should create a great mischief if we construed this statute, the one I referred to, as to invite argument in case after case as to whether or not the object in question was sharp. And so, in other words, a knife with no handle and no cutting edge or point is capable of being a bladed article within the meaning of section 139. So, just to restate that for clarity, even if there is no point, even if there is no cutting edge, it is an edge of a knife in one sense or another, even without a handle, is still capable of being a bladed article uh, in accordance with section 139 of the Act. So if we were to take this for a moment and turn it upside down and say that, forget the sharp edge for a moment, let's say we're talking about this edge here, and let's say this is obviously, if you look at it end on, is obviously not sharp, but if we look at it as a flat edge and it was the same on both sides, that, even without the handle, is still a blade. So being three inches, it would need to be folding to be a folding pocket knife. But any other kind of blade, whether sharp or not, handle or not, point or not, is still capable of being a blade in accordance with Section 139 of the Criminal Justice Act. Now, other questions, just as a bonus for this video, revolve around what a good reason might be and whether or not forgetting that it was there amounts to a good reason. In reverse order, for no apparent reason, um, a, a forgetfulness by itself is not going to be a good reason, whereas, um, as in Crown and Giles, if you, or, or rather um, an application, Bayliss and DPP in 2003, 
Um, forgetfulness by itself doesn't constitute a good reason, but having a good reason at the time in question and then forgetfulness later might amount to a good reason. Now, what might be a good reason? Well, some good reasons might include things such as camping, fishing, climbing, or more standard good reasons might be that you, you are using it for work or you have it with you for religious reasons or it's part of a national costume which are also set out in section 139. Now, it is upon you to prove that you have this with you for a good reason or other lawful authority in a public place. This is, as I say, upon you to prove and will be robustly tested in cross-examination. Now, it is not good enough to simply give a reason um, you have to prove that it's a good reason. So putting that more simply, an excuse for having it with you is not necessarily a good reason. So if you have an excuse, that might give an excuse as to why you have it, but it doesn't excuse you in the sense that it uh, brings it out of being an offence for this section. It still needs to be a good reason. Subsection 4 reads, it shall be a defence for a person charged with an offence under this section to prove that he had good reason or lawful authority. So it is for you to prove, and it will be robustly tested, I can assure you, uh, under cross-examination as to what that reason is and whether it is a good one, whether it falls to be a good reason. But coming back to the common question at hand, whether or not a folding pocket knife is still within the exemption, if it has, for example, let's say if the full length of the blade was four inches, but only three inches of it was sharp. If there was an extra inch here that was not sharp before the handle, that would no longer be a folding pocket knife for the purposes of this act. I hope you found that useful. Please do remember to give this video a like and a subscribe because as I say, 60% of you don't subscribe and that really does help my channel grow and I'm really grateful for it. So leave your questions, your comments and your thoughts down below. Make sure you have liked and subscribed. I've given you long enough to do that by now and I thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. <music>